Hey guys, Eri is here and welcome along to another video. Now I've done a few of these types of videos over the years, but nowadays I'm a little bit older, I'm a little bit wiser, so I save them for special occasions. And today is one of those occasions. But we're gonna to get to that in good time as we're here at the Nürburgring for a couple more daily races. These can get quite samey after a few days and towards the end of the week, so I decided to change a couple of things and spice them up just a little bit. So here we are then lined up for the first race of two that we're going to be doing today and in this one as you can see we are in the Dodge Viper. We're in pole position here for this 10 lap race in the group three cars. Now the go-to strategy here is a fuel saving no stopper but to add said spice I have chosen this which is the worst car for this in the game. Now many will be using cars like the Porsche 911, the Volkswagen Beetle, the new Subaru for their fuel saving capabilities. But this car has an 8.3 litre naturally aspirated engine. So a fuel saving machine, it is not. It's not great on its tyres either. So the idea here is to go all out, as you can see here, lead from the front, then pit halfway at the end of lap number five and then hunt down whoever we need to to get that podium. That's going to be the aim in these ones today, just to get a podium. A win may well be out of reach, but a podium might just be achievable. So this gives us two phases. This is the first phase, which is pulling away, and then phase two is going to be after we pit from lap six onwards, which will be the recovery phase. So the first five laps went well. We had a couple of trips just, well, not really trips, but we put a couple of wheels on the gravel on a couple of the laps but the main thing was nothing major and we got no penalties and the first phase is going to end here at the end of lap number five as expected and we come in from the lead we've got 22 percent fuel left and our tires are looking and feeling rather second hand so as we pull into our pit box here we're going to get some new boots on we're going to fill up the car we're going to go past the diamond just to be sure, I've been burnt by that thing multiple times in the past and we're gonna get back out on track. So we come out of the pits here with new boots and enough fuel and critically, we make it out just ahead of P5. Looking at the Delta, there's over seven seconds between ourselves and P3, which is our target in this one. And this is where the exciting bit comes in. Rather than nursing the car to the end as part of the usual no-stop strategy, due to the pit stop we've just made, we have complete freedom to push. We're gonna have enough fuel, our tires probably struggle towards the end as they did in the first stint, but they're gonna be much better than those on a no-stopper. And as a result, it's clear, looking at the Delta once again, that we're gonna be with him very, very soon. We took over three seconds out of him, and therefore we're only four seconds behind P3 as we come through to finish lap number six. Moving ahead to the end of lap number seven, as you can see by the purple sectors, we are on for the quickest lap of this race. And as such, we are now closing right in on P3. As we come down into the Vidal chicane here, we're just gonna get a much better exit than third. He's gonna try and go defensive. We go right and then peel back to the left and we're just going to go round the outside here and take third place. So we're back into the podium positions here. We've just got to make sure that we don't throw this one away. Our tyres are going to start to wear. We've got enough fuel, but the tyres are going to be the problem here. We also want to keep an eye up in front because you never know what could happen and we could end up with something better than just third. Moving ahead to the start of lap number nine then, we've just logged our fastest lap of the race. We're five seconds as a result ahead of fourth now. But as I mentioned, we never know if anyone ahead will run out of fuel. So we've just got to keep pushing. But I was pushing just a little bit too hard and coming out of turn number 10, our tires are going to give up the ghost and around we go. We end up in the barriers here and we're going to lose third place as the 911 comes past. There's another one right behind us as well and it's going to be in our slipstream as we come down the back straight. Now we've been here before and when I mean we've been here before, we've been at the Nürburgring with someone breathing down our necks. We're not sure if there's going to be a lunge here 
but learning from the last video we're going to keep our eye on the radar and with good reason the Olay 911 comes flying through into the Vidal chicane not sure if it's outbreaking himself or he was going for a lunge either way we've managed to avoid it we're in one piece still and we can now concentrate as we start this final lap here of recovering that one odd second to the 911 in front that we just lost the place to and getting our third place back. So on the run down towards the hairpin then we're going to end up right back again with the 911. We're going to get a good run out of the hairpin meaning we are on his rear bumper. We need to be patient and we can afford to be as we come through the Schumacher S's because we have got plentiful fuel and we just need to wait till the straight and then we can make our move but we're not actually going to need to wait till the straight because the 911 on its worn tyres remember it hasn't pitted ends up going wide at turn number 10 and gratefully we receive our third place back so all we need to do now here is just not mess up the Vidal chicane the breaking point here is just before the 100 there's a little bit of a muddy bit on the side which is our breaking point we hit that don't monster the curbs too much. Try and hit the bollard on exit, and we have made it through, giving us one last corner to get through, which will give us the third place that we need. We managed to avoid that, no issues at all, and we're gonna come through and take our third place. So all in all, a good result. A Little bit of jeopardy in there, but definitely spicier than usual. So let's move on to race number two then. And you're going to see here that I am using the Mustang this time around, which is another of the worst cars for this race in the game. Thanks to its 5 litre naturally aspirated V8. Like the Viper, this thing isn't great at fuel saving either. You'll see here that we've lined up in pole position once more for another 10 laps in the Group 3 cars. The strat's the same as well. Go all out for the first 5 laps, pit and then hunt down whoever we need to to get a podium but if you've clicked on this video and you read the title and the thumbnail on the way in you're probably guessing that this is the race where something happens but before we get into that the first five laps went well there were no trips to the gravel trap this time no penalties again either but the weakness of this car really really showed here despite no mistakes at all I just couldn't shake second place as we reached the end of the first stint here, it was time to come in. 28% of fuel was left for this one, so a little bit better than the Viper in the previous race. And the tyres are about on par. So we've got some new tyres, and we've filled up as well, going past the diamond again as always. We come out in a pretty comfortable fourth place. The only cars in front of us are the three drivers who are doing the no stopper. So the challenge is now crystal clear. 15 odd seconds, five laps, and absolutely nothing in between us. We've got fresh tires, we've got enough fuel, so it's time to go, go, go. As we come into the final corner here on our outlap, the gap is coming down. We just need to concentrate getting the exit right, not pushing too hard. We managed to do that and we come across the line with the gap reduced to 13.2. So we took around one and a half seconds out of third place on that one. We need to keep pushing though, because we cannot let up. We've still got an absolute mountain to climb and we're running out of time. And keep pushing, we did. And that culminated in the fastest lap of the race with a one minute 55.8. The gap as a result dropped to 10.8. We took another 1.4 seconds out of third place on that previous lap. We've still got to increase it though, because at this rate, we're just not gonna catch him by the end. But something actually helps us out here, because as we're coming through the Mercedes-Benz arena, it was 10 seconds, the gap. But that is gonna come down and down and down. Keep your eye on the delta there as we exit the arena here and come down towards this next left and right hander. By the time we get through these, the delta's actually dropped to 8.2. And on the run down to the hairpin, if you look in the distance there, we actually get the first sight of him as well. Spurred on by this, we actually put in another quickest lap of the race, a 55.6 now. 
and the gap has dropped to around six seconds so a huge four second drop from the 10.8 on the lap before so we're on the penultimate lap now pushing is absolutely still required and you can see here that pushing was top of the agenda for us sector one we were fastest again and as we come down the hill once more you can see how much time we're getting we're visually so much closer now as we come out of the hairpin towards the end of sector two we are confirmed as fast as once again however as we mentioned tires are gonna be a problem in this big heavy car i'm feeling that the tires are starting to go a little bit and we're gonna have a big wiggle coming out of turn number 10 the same place that caught us out in the viper last time round but as we cross the beam for the final sector, we're going to see that the moment cost us a little bit of time. But crucially, rather than binning it like we did last time, we are still in this one. And we're going to stay on board for the remainder of this race. We're going to break when we see the dirt on the right hand side there for the Beadle chicane. Jump over the bollard. Again, sounds horrendous like I said in the previous race. But that gives you a good steer to know you had a good exit. Speaking of good exits, we get a good exit coming out of the final corner here and we're going to start the final lap. And as we do, you can see here that the gap is down to just above two and a half seconds now. A massive drop from the 15 that it was when we came out of the pits on lap number six. Now, we've got one and a half laps worth of fuel. That kind of goes to show how horrendous this thing and how thirsty this thing is when it comes to fuel, but that doesn't matter because we've got enough and that is all that matters. And everything that we have is now locked onto that 911 up in front. We just need to make sure that we don't push too hard and drop it. We've got to be wary of those tires, of course, but we want to be close enough to have a run on him coming down into the final chicane. So we have a good run coming down the hill here. No real dramas at this point. He's clearly looking in his rear view as I would be, to be quite honest, if someone had taken 15 seconds out of me on an average of three per lap. We have a bit of a slide here as we get on the power coming out of the hairpin, which reminds us that we just have to be super careful. We keep it nice and easy here through the Michael Schumacher S's, and of course, we need to be careful through turn number 10. And as we come to turn number 10, everything we're thinking about is the exit of turn number 11. We need to take a wide entry, a tight exit, get on the power as early as possible. We nail it and we get a great run on him onto the back straight. He's gonna to move to the inside. I pull out and then commit to the outside. He's gonna move across. I have two wheels on the grass. I just about managed to get the stop for the hairpin. He turns in. It looks like we're clear. We've got our third until this. Fifteen seconds taken out of him over the last five laps. All that hard work for absolutely nothing. But it is what it is. I wanted to spice up the dailies, but not that much. And as we come out of the final corner here, two races and almost two podiums. It's clear by the title and the thumbnail, of course, what my view of that was. But as always, I want your view. It's good to have a different perspective and I'm going to leave you now with a few replays of this one so that you can decide for yourself. Please let me know in the comment section down below if the reaction by that driver after that move from me was worth it. But before I leave you with those, I just want to say thank you as always for watching. Please do hit that like button if you enjoyed it and also please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers so it'd be great if you could help us get there. With that being said, I'll catch you guys all very soon in the next one. Cheers.